Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem of the day. And today's problem is K inverse pairs array and it is a hard little problem. So this problem basically says that we have been given a size n and we have to find the number of permutations. Remember the number of permutations of size n such that the like number of inverses is exactly k. So what is an inverse? An inverse is a pair where i is less than j basically means i is smaller than j and nums of i is greater than nums of j. So basically uh, like this for example this one here 2 and 1 is an inverse and 2 and uh, 3 is not an inverse. Why? Because 2 occurs before every other number and it is greater than 1 only. So it is counted as an inverse but 2 and 3 since 3 is greater it is not counted as an inverse. Right? This is what the definition of an inverse pair is. Now why I said permutation? Because you can clearly see that they have taken permutations. Although they have not mentioned it here, we just, they just say return the number of different arrays consisting of numbers of from 1 to n such that there are exactly k inverse pairs. Consisting of numbers from 1 to n, they have written this, but they have not written consisting of distinct numbers from 1 to n. Right. So they have not mentioned it properly, but they mean uh, permutations only. No number can be repeated more than once because, for example, if repetition was allowed, then uh, we will say, let us say uh, 1, 2 and 1. In this particular example, you can see that this particular element is greater than this one and hence it is one inverse pair. So this example should also have been included in the value of n is equals to 3 and k is equals to 1. But as we can see when n is equals to 3 and k is equals to 1, the answer is only 2 and this particular permutation that this particular uh, uh, sequence that we have written is not valid 1 to 1, right? Because here 1 to 1 is repeated, uh, 1 is repeated and 3 is not present, right? So uh, they need to write it th this particular part more clearly then I believe the problem will be complete. Anyways, you can clearly see that the solution is pretty small if you look at it code wise but to arrive at this particular solution is not an easy task. So if you are not able to solve this problem then you do not need to worry because uh, uh, the observation is uh, a little difficult, right? So let me reiterate the problem for you. We have been given two values n and k. We have to find the number of permutations of size n such that there are exactly k inverse pairs. What is a k? What is an inverse pair? It is a pair such that i is less than j and nums of i, nums of i is greater than nums of j. Right? This is an inverse pair. So how can we actually solve this problem? Before solving the problem, let us say we have these, this, these four elements 1, 2, 3 and 4. In this particular uh, case, you will see that the number of inverse pairs are 0, right? Now let me just do one operation and move 4 1 space to the left. You will see the number of inverse pairs will be 1. Now if I move 4 1 space to the left as well, so 1, 4, 2, 3, the number of inverses will be 2, right? So you see by moving the biggest digit 1 spaces to the left 1 by 1, I am increasing the number of inverse pairs by 1. Now let us say, let us just take this particular example only 1, 4, 2 and 3. Here we have the inverse pairs equals to 2. Now let us say I add 5 to it. Will the number of inverse pairs change in this particular case? The answer is strictly no because the biggest value that I had had been added to the last. So it cannot form any other inverse pairs and hence if I take the first four numbers and add the new value at the end of it, the number of inverse pairs will not change, right? This is the first part of the observation. Now let's say, can I try to try to do the same thing I was doing here with four, right? Yes, I can try to do the same thing. I can write one, four, two, five, three, and the number of inverse pairs will be three in this particular case. I can move one space five to the one space to the left, and again the number of inverse pairs will be four now. One, four, five, two, and three. Now from this particular permutation, I can take this 5 to the first position and write 5, 1, 4, 2 and 3. What will be the new value of the inverse pairs? That will be of 6 I guess, right? And you see that let us say we had some 4 elements before 5. We do not know what are the number of inverse pairs in them and we do not care about them. We just know that there are elements from 1 to 4. We only know this particular fact, right? So if there are first four elements or first n elements with elements 1 to 4 and I insert 
my maximum element at the end that is n plus 1th element then what uh, what are the maximum number of new universe pairs that I can form that will be equals to the number of elements n itself you can clearly see that if I place 5 at the end I will form no new pairs right if I placed 5 at one uh, space before the last element then I will be able to form one new inverse pair if I place 5 at the beginning then I will be able to form four new inverses pair that is why initially it was 2 now it has become 6 right so let me just repeat this part in a more general format let us say I have first n elements right and let us say the number of inverse pairs is x right we do not we do not care about this particular x for now we just know that it is x somehow now I insert a new element n plus 1 at the end if I insert it at the end it will not change the value of x x will remain as it is right now I can put this last element n plus 1 in such a way I can put it in between and the new inverses that I can form is in the range from 0 to n. I can form 0 new inverses or at max n new inverses. 0 new inverses will be formed when I place this biggest element at the end and n new inverses will be formed when I place this biggest element at the beginning position. Right. So, I have a range of values that I can form. But let us say I wanted to form a fixed inverse y. Right. I wanted to form a fixed inverse y and I want to find out what are the possible number of ways I can form this particular inverse y. Right. So, let us try to figure that particular thing out. Let us say we had 1, 2, 3, 4. So, for this particular thing we have the value of n is equal to 4 and the x is equal to 2. So, what is x here? The number of inverse pairs in these first four elements. Right. Now, let us say the value of uh, 5 that is n plus 1 element is added at the end. My target inverse pairs is 4. Let us say. Right. So, how can I form 4? In this particular case from the first 4 elements the value of since the value of x was 2 what I can try to do is I can place this element here and I can write it as 1, 4, 5, 2, 3. So, initially the number of inverses was 2. Now, this particular 5 have added 2 new inverses by going to this particular position and hence the total number of uh, inverses is 4. Right. But let us say the value or, or previous value was not x, it uh, x is equal to 2, it was x is equal to 1. So, for n is equal to 4 and x is equal to 1, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. This is one of the cases satisfying this particular condition. And let us say if I add 5 here and the value of y is still 4. Now, I can still do something. I can make, take this 5 and place it here. Right. So, 1, 5, 2, 4 and 3. So, what happened just now? The initial number of inverses were 4, 1. And I have introduced 3 new inverses here. By adding 5 here, I have introduced 3 new inverses. So, the total number of inverses is now become 4. Right. So, you see, to form a particular inverse y, I have different ways to form that particular inverse y. And the first way was when the previous inverse was 2. The second way we discovered was the previous when the previous inverse was 1. Now, since I have a range of values that I can create with this particular new value. So, as I have already discussed, either I can create 0 new inverses or n new inverses. So, what will be the range of values of this particular x such that I can form the total number of inverses equals to y? This is my next question. So, let me tell, tell you this part again. So, I have some previous inverses x. Now, I can add some value to it and that is from the range 0 to n. Right. This is the previous number of inverses that were already there. This is the new number of inverses that I can create, right? And this value should be equals to y, right? Now, my question is, I know the range of these particular values. I want to figure out what is the range of x such that this particular equation is true, right? So, basically, if I can take this value from 0 to n and I want to find out what is the range of this particular value so that I can make the total number of inverses to be y. So, let us say that range is let us say 0 to x something plus 0 to n this should be equal to y right. So, how to find out the maximum element in this particular range? I can do it by y minus 0 and how to find out the minimum element in this particular range? I can do it by y minus n right. So, this is the minimum element required in the range to make the sum equals to y. And this is the maximum element required in the range to make the sum is equals to y, right. So, again let me just explain you this part again. I know what are the new number of inverses that I can add. This 
is from the range 0 to n. Either I can add 0 new inverses or 1 new inverse or 2 new inverse or at most n new inverses. This is for sure. Now, I also know that I want to make the sum equals to y. So, in this particular second element that I have, what is the minimum value that I need from here? The minimum value will be equals to when I take the maximum value here and that is y minus n. The maximum value here will be equals to when I take the minimum element here and that will be y minus 0. Right. So, that means my answer is possible if the value of x was y or if the value of x was y plus 1 or if the value of x was y plus 2 and so on up to value of x is equals to y minus n. Right. If the value of x in this particular range, for all of these ranges, I can form my total number of inverses is equals to y. Right. How can I form it? By changing the position of the last element that I have just added. So basically, I have to do the summation of dp of i minus 1 y plus dp of i minus 1 y plus 1. Right. So basically, for all of these values up to dp of i minus 1 up to y minus n. Right. So, let me just give you the summary of this particular part once more because I know that this is a little bit hard to visualize. So, what you can try to do is, let me just take the example, the value of n was equals to 4 initially. The new value of y that we want to form is let us say 4 as well. So, there will be 4 elements 1, 2, 3, 4 arranged in some order. Right. We do not know what that order is and the order that these elements are arranged in will like help us to find the new value the value of x right so what i am saying is i am going to add this new element 5 here right for that i will need a position in which dp of i minus 1 y so basically where these four elements are present and they are forming y number of inverse pairs right so let's say the value of y is 4 can we form four inverse pairs from here so i believe we can do this so 4 2 3 and 1. Is this correct? So, 4 is forming 3 and 3 is forming 1. So, I believe the, okay, so this is not correct actually. It should be like this. 1 here and 2 here. So, 3 is forming an inverse pair with this. 1 cannot form an inverse pair and 4 is forming the inverse pair with these 3. So, this is the particular configuration in which the uh, value of n is 4. The value of x is equals to 4 as well and if I add 5 here at the end, the total number of inverses will not change and it will still be equals to 4, right. So, that is why I have taken dp of i minus 1 y. What about dp of i minus 1 y plus 1, right. So, this should be actually i y minus 1, right. So, all of these places, I said it this particular part incorrectly. This should be y, y minus 1, then y minus 2 and then up to y minus n because this value is very small. Right. So, I just uh, reverse the order actually. This will be the greatest value and this will be the smallest value. So, anyways, now we have to figure out for y minus 1. I, the value of y is 4. This will be a configuration y 1, 4, 1, 2, 3. Right. So, this will be a configuration where the value of x is equal to 3, which is exactly what I need y minus 1. That is 4 minus 1 and that is 3. Right. This is one configuration where x is equal to 3 and d, we are trying to add the number of ways to reach here. And we know we can form y is equal to 4 by adding 5 at this particular position. So, you see what is happening is this particular configuration already had the value of inverse is equal to 3. I can place 5 here to make the value of inverse is 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, right. And it will also work for y minus n as well. So, basically we needed to figure out the summation of all these number of different ways because I know that with the last value 5, I can form 0 inverses, 1 inverses and up to n new inverses, right. Now, the question is how do we figure out the summation of these values? So, to solve this particular problem, we are always going to store in dp of ij. Let me now define the dp, dp states. So, I am going to have dp of ij. dp of ij is denoting together For the first i elements, the summation of, so it is going to denote the summation of the number of inverses from 0 to j, right. So, basically for the first i elements, 
it is going to denote the sum of inverses inverses from 0 to j. So, it is not denoting the number of inverses j, it is denoting the number of inverses from 0 to j. So, basically from uh, d, it is basically the number of inverses at position i that means you including the first i elements in 0, 0 number of inverses, then 1 number of inverses, then 2 number of inverses. So, dp of let us say dp of i 2 is going to store the summation of all of these 3 values, right. Why are we storing the summation? So, that we can figure out this particular part in constant time. This is the only reason we need to store the summation so that we can figure out this particular part in constant time and we do not have to calculate all of the values one by one. Otherwise, it will also include one more factor of O of k and the time complexity will be roughly n cube, which is not what we want. We want to keep it to n square. That is why we are going to store the prefix sum. That is why dp of ij is going to denote the answer for the first i elements and the summation of for those i elements the number of inverses from 0 to j, right. So, now let me show you the code what I have tried to done. You see I have initialized the long modular value with n to the power 9 plus 7. I have taken all the values at long long because I summarized it with integer and it gave me overflow and the size of the matrix is n plus 1 cross k plus 1. I have initialized all of these values with 1. I will tell you why. So, let us say when there are 0 number of inverses and any number of elements n. We know that the answer will always be 1 because I can always arrange the elements like this and for this particular case the number of inverses is 0. So, there is exactly one, one combination in which the number of inverses is 0, right. That is why I have initialized all the values with 1 and I am not going to touch the value k is equal to 0. I am only, st only starting from k is equal to 1, right. So, the first for loop is going to denote the number of elements and the second for loop is not going to denote the value of uh, k, right. Now, I can figure out the maximum value that is j itself. So, you see here I have defined this maximum value and here I have defined this minimum value that is j minus i minus 1. So, this is the minimum value. So, why I have done i minus 1 here? Because at this particular position, let us say I am at index 5, right. So, for this particular position, I wanted to know 4, right. Because for 5, 4 is the maximum new value that I can add. That is why I have done i minus 1 here. So, I have figured out maximum and the minimum value. Now, I want to figure out the range in the sum. Right. So, I want to figure out range sum in the range from dp of i min to dp of i max, right. So, I can do it by this way, I am, so this is i minus 1 actually, i minus 1. So, since I am storing the prefix sum, what I am doing is dp of i minus 1 max and if minimum is equal is greater than 0, I am going to take i minus 1 min minus 1, otherwise I am going to take 0. So, why is this particular part important? Because if minimum is equal to 0, then min minus 1 will be equal to minus 1 and hence it is going to give me an error. So, whenever min is equal to 0, I am just going to take 0, otherwise if it is greater than 0, I am going to take dp of i minus 1 minimum minus 1. So, this is the part where we calculate the range in this, the sum in this particular range dp of i minus 1 minimum and dp5 minus 1 maximum. Now, since I am taking the prefix sum, I have to add dp of ij minus 1 to dp of ij, right. This is the only way I can store the prefix sum. At the end, since I only need the answer for k and I am storing the prefix sums, I need to subtract dp of n k minus 1, right. And I can only do it if I am, if the value of k is greater than 0, because if it is 0, again, this is going to be minus 1 and that is not a valid thing. So, what I am going to do only if it is greater than 0, I am going to subtract dp of nk minus 1 from dp of nk so that I can get the value of dp of the first n elements and when the value of inverse is equal to k. Otherwise, dp of nk will be store, will store, will be storing the summation of all the inverses from 0 to k. I do not want the summation, I do only want the value for k, that is why I have to subtract this. If k is equal to 0, then I can di directly subtract 0 only. Right. And at the end, I just have to return the whole value module. So, you see the code was very, very simple, but uh, the idea was a bit complex, I agree. So, that is it for this particular video. Let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So, you see this passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand so, this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. Till the next video drop, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.